This is the lecture one of systematic analog CMOS circuit design using GM over ID technique. Introduction to GM over ID, the key to efficient analog circuit performance. This is the outline of lecture one. First, we will compare the conventional design method versus the proposed method, the GM over ID design technique. We will describe the advantages of using the GM over ID technique over the conventional one. Second, we will try to define the meaning of GM over ID and its importance. Conventional design versus GM over ID design technique. In the conventional design of analog circuits, given a target specification, we start our design with hand calculations based on the square law. Then we have our first circuit with the initial sizes of the transistors. We then perform circuit simulations using cadence or other simulators with device models of transistors from the foundry. Then we have our first results. Most of the time, there is a mismatch between what we have expected using our hand calculations and the simulation results. The main problem is that the square law doesn't accurately reflect how devices really behave, especially with advanced process nodes like 22 nanometers, 16 nanometers, or 10 nanometers. At these tiny scales, second-order effects, like channel length modulation, CLM, and drain-induced barrier lowering, DIBL, become significant. The square law can't account for those. It also doesn't work well when you need to model transistors operating in moderate or weak inversion, which we'll discuss later in this lecture. Because of all these limitations, you're stuck running endless simulations, constantly adjusting transistor sizes just to meet your specifications. That's a headache in the industry, especially when there's pressure to get products to market quickly. To solve the issue we just described, the GM over ID design methodology was developed. In this design methodology, instead of using the square law, we design using a lookup table. This lookup table provides a very accurate behavior of the transistor device. In this methodology, our simulation results are very close to what we have designed, primarily because all the second order effects such as CLM and DIBL, are captured in the lookup table. Also, all the inversion levels, moderate, weak, and strong, are captured in the lookup table. In this section, we will discuss the meaning of the GM over ID parameter. Consider the NMOS and its cross-section displayed on the right side of the slide. An NMOS transistor enters saturation mode when the gate-to-source voltage, VGS, exceeds the threshold voltage, VTH, and the drain-to-source voltage, VDS, is at least equal to VGS minus VTH. The difference, VGS minus VTH, is referred to as the overdrive voltage, VOV. The square law equation for drain current, ID, is valid only when the NMOS is operating in saturation mode. Let's break this down. Transconductance, or GM, shows how effectively a transistor converts an input voltage into output current. It's simply the derivative of the drain current with respect to VGS. Put simply, GM represents the transistor's gain. A higher GM means better performance. 
When the transistor is operating in saturation, Gm equals the square root of 2 times electron mobility times the gate oxide capacitance, COx, times the width-to-length ratio, W over L, times the drain current, Id. While this formula might not be exact for the most advanced devices, it gets the main point across. You can choose any combination of W, L, and Id to reach a desired GM. There are many possibilities. Suppose you've chosen your GM. Now, as a designer, you want two things, to use as little current, ID, as possible, and to make the transistor as small as you can, both in width, W, and length, L. For length, it's straightforward. Simply choose the minimum allowed by your process. But with width and current, you're limited. You can reduce W or lower ID, but you can't do both at once. The key point is, the product of W and ID must always remain constant. In order to think systematically about these trade-offs, two figures of merit are introduced, GM over ID and GM over W. First, look at the GM over ID. On the graph, as we vary the overdrive voltage VOV from negative 0.4 to 0.8 volts, you can see that the real device, the blue curve, doesn't align with the square law, which is the green curve. Why? The square law is valid only when VOV is above 0.2 volts. If you go below that, it just doesn't represent the actual behavior of the transistor. Same with GM over W. The square law equation is only valid for a certain range of values, from 0 to around 0 0.4 volts of overdrive voltage. In these two graphs, we've seen that the square law is only valid for certain ranges of overdrive voltages. VOV is like a knob that sets the width and drain current for a given transconductance GM. This lookup table, unlike the square law, is able to capture the real transistor behavior across the entire range of overdrive voltage VOV. GM over ID is an important figure of merit when sizing transistors. For a given GM, it indicates how effectively a device converts bias current into transconductance. This is known as transconductance efficiency. As shown in the diagram, GM over ID spans the entire range of overdrive voltage, VOV. This remains true for all modern CMOS technologies as well. Another key aspect of GM over ID is how it connects to other important analog design metrics. There's GM over W, which is transconductance per unit width, ID over W, or the current density, and GM over GDS, or GMR0, representing the transistor's intrinsic gain, with R0 as the output impedance. You also have FT, the transit frequency, indicating the highest frequency at which the transistor can still function as an amplifier. Viewing things through the GM over ID perspective lets you clearly see the main trade-offs. You can consider bandwidth, noise, distortion, and power dissipation all at once, and since everything is normalized, it makes comparisons much easier. A transistor model file of any process node, such as TSMC 180 nanometers, TSMC 22 nanometers, Intel FinFET 10 nanometers process, etc., must be used when characterizing the device. For device characterization, 
we will measure and list GM values for different channel lengths, L, gate to source voltages, VGS, drain to source voltages, VDS, and source to body voltages, VSB. We will also do the same for R0, or 1 over GDS, the current density ID over W, and the gate to source capacitance, CGS, which is needed to determine the transit frequency, FT. Let's keep going. The transistor's GM over ID ratio changes based on its inversion level. First up is strong inversion. Looking at the blue curve, you'll notice strong inversion starts when GM over ID falls below 12. In this region, the classic square law is still accurate, so you can use it to predict the transistor's behavior. Strong inversion means there's a large amount of inversion charge under the gate. The channel is full. With more charge, the transistor can deliver a higher drain current. This extra current lets you charge load capacitance faster, which is ideal for high-speed circuits. The downside is that more current also leads to greater power consumption. You'll see the strong inversion region located between the two dashed lines on the graph. The weak inversion. Weak inversion happens when a transistor carries the smallest possible current. Weak inversion refers to the operating region of a MOSFET when its gate to source voltage, VGS, is below the threshold, voltage VTH. In formulas, it's shown as 1 over N times UT, where UT is the thermal voltage and N is the sub-threshold factor. At such low current, charging the load capacitance takes more time, so this method isn't great if you need speed. The benefit? Lower current means lower power consumption. You'll find this operating region between the two dashed lines on the graph. The moderate inversion. Moderate inversion sits squarely between strong and weak inversion. In this range, GM per ID falls between 12 and 18, shown between those two dashed lines. Honestly, it's almost impossible to describe this region with math. Many researchers have tried to solve it. That's why we take a different approach. Rather than getting stuck in equations, we use a graphical lookup table to design the circuit. It simply works better for this challenging region. Here's the graph showing all the inversion levels of the transistors. As a summary of this section, here are the advantages of using the GM over ID technique when developing the analog circuit. First, Device model and lookup table matches across the entire range of overdrive voltage. Second, without being math-heavy, the lookup table can accurately describe the behavior of the transistor across all ranges of VOV, and the trade-off from other figures of merit can be easily observed. Third, we can eliminate the need for VOV as the design parameter. Instead, we use the GM over ID that relates to all other figures of merit. End of the lecture.